Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to improve the bullet and we are going to set up a enemy so all the functionality is in place. And in the last video which will be part 5 I believe we are going to create explosions for the cannonball. We're gonna set up a health bar so you can actually see the health and you're gonna add some animations on the enemy to make it react when you hit it and when it dies. So let's begin by opening our project. You can find all the files and links and information you need in the description below to follow along. I have prepared ahead of time a few assets. Now the reason they're not the same assets as we I was showing in uh, the first video is because I have accidentally deleted my project. So the entire project I had made ahead of time is gone. So we are going to have a small changes. Basically I won't be making a health bar using shaders. I will make I will make it <laughs> very I'll keep it simple. I'm going to get all the assets we're gonna need in this video and the next one and add it to our project. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna find the project folder here. I'm gonna add it in here. So let's see here. We have a player, we have a health bar. Let me just paste it in here. Actually, let's create a new folder. I'm gonna name it assets. I'm gonna paste it all in there. Now the player, or rather the enemy, which is badly named. So I'm gonna name it enemy. The enemy I'm gonna drag into another folder. So I'm gonna cut that. I'm going to go back and I'm going into entities. And then I'm gonna create a new enemy folder. Because this is where we're gonna store our enemy scene and assets. So I'm gonna create a new folder inside enemy and name it assets. And I'm gonna paste it in right there. So let's go back into our project here. Let's begin by fixing our cannon ball. Let's go into entities, cannon, cannon ball, and then open our scene. So what we're gonna begin with today is we're gonna set up the cannonball layers and mass so that it can collide with each other but not the cannon itself. Now currently the cannon is set to layer 2, which means we cannot interact with the cannonballs on each other on that layer. So I'm going to add the cannonball to a third and final layer on both of them. And in case you're not very familiar with what it does, layers is the collision layer you are on. This is all about the cannonball itself. Mask is checking what the collision on other layers. So our cannonball is checking for collision on the first layer, which are the solid objects such as the ground and walls, and the third layer, which is ourself, because we are on the third layer. So let's test it now. Let's save, let it play, and make sure they bounce on each other, which should be the case. And it does. Good. So what if you want the cannonball to destroy on impact? Well, let's create a bull for that. So I'm going to create an export, and that will be a type bull var explode on impact and by default you may not want it to do so or you may want it to do either way i'm just going to set a default value so i'm going to set it to true for now so how do we handle this how do we manage this well if you take a look at the fixed process here we have a is colliding check here which means if we're colliding with something obviously we, <laughs> we want it to explode on impact if this is true of course so inside here i'm going to create a new if so if explode the impact is true we then want to explode. But to prevent this from continuing, because this is a fixed process, it's gonna go and go and go and go, unless we stop it. So I'm going to set fixed process to false. And then lastly, I'm going to return. So we never get to this part of the code. It's just gonna jump out and end right there. But we will have to create the explosion now. So I'm going to create a new function that does just that. So let's create the explode function, which will simply get rid of the ball. So we have a flunk explode, Q3. So if everything is correct now, so on impact, this is going to destroy the ball, I'm gonna set process to false and return it. Now technically speaking, we don't need to set this to false because we're already removing it from memory. But if you want to continue this and adding effects and animations when you hit with the ball, you may want to do it this way. So I'm just gonna do it this way to begin with. Okay, so let's make sure this works here. Now, Explosion Impact is by default set to true. So if I shoot something and hit the wall, it should disappear. And it does. Good. So let's continue to create the enemy. So select scene, a new scene, and then we're going to create a new node. And this will be a kinematic body, because this is what we're working with in this project. We are strictly going with kinematic bodies. We have full control of our own game logic. Let's name this enemy. And inside our enemy, we want several nodes. Now the first node I'm going to add is the sprite itself, so we can actually see our enemy. So I'm going to right click, select add child node, find the sprite node, click that. I'm going to rename this to all lower capital letters. I'm going to load our texture which we have inserted into our enemy's folder, which is the file inside entities, enemy and assets. Let's select that. 
Now, as you can see, this is kind of, <laughs> it's very big. This little square over here, this is what you would see when you actually play it. This is the game screen. So you can see this guy is huge. So let's reduce the size of this sprite a little bit. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna change the scale to 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. There we go, that's much better. So I'm gonna press Ctrl S to save or simply go to scene and select save scene. And then navigate to the entities, enemy folder and save it as enemy TSCN. Hit save. Okay, but what else? Well, we don't have a body yet. If I were to shoot a cannonball through this guy, he would, it would just it would go through this guy. <laughs> so let's right click the enemy. So let's add shell node and find the collision polygon. And the reason I'm picking the polygon one and not the shape one is because this enemy has a kind of weird shape and you may not want it to hit when it's out here or here or if it's circle, you know, or even a square. It might, uh, it, it wouldn't be right. So select on the polygon collision. We're gonna select this little thing over here. You can select edit, turn on you snap, turn on show grid, and let's see here. Now the grid is a bit too big now, because you see the little square here. I can't, I can't be precise enough. So I'm just gonna select edit, configure snap, and the grid steps here. I will reduce the size of the X and Y to 4, and then hit close. And this will allow me to precisely set the collision box. So I'm gonna select this again, I'm gonna start by drawing a new shape. Now, because the, the bullets are quite big, we don't need to go this in detail, so I'm just gonna kind of roughly shape this. Now, one reason to do this may be because you may want to save resources for your computational power in the game, if you're running an Android game, or iPhone, or whatever it is you're running. So, less points means less work for the computer to calculate collisions. Here's something to keep in mind. Now, we don't have to worry about that now, so this is just fine. But I'm gonna rename this, because this will be our physics collision. This will be what the cannonballs themselves are gonna bounce on, if we don't have explosion on impact enable, of course. Now, we will need to create an area 2D. This will be used to check whether or not a cannonball has hit this guy. The reason I'm choosing to use an area 2D and not directly use the body to check if I'm collided with something is because if I were to check collision that way, I would have to enable a process. And I would have to loop, loop, loop and always check for collision every frame. And I don't want that. I wanted to check for collision only when the collision itself happens. So using an area 2D is a very good option without having to use a process to do that for you. So I'm gonna select area 2D. I'm gonna right click this. I'm going to add a shell node and this will be a collision polygon, the same as we used above there. So for this shape, I'm gonna make it a little bigger than the physical shape itself. So about two, two squares out of, outside, I'm gonna add new shapes. Now the bottom part is not that important because it will be standing still there and there. So now this is bigger than the collision box itself. So let's make sure to enable it as a trigger because this is what it's going to do. It's going to trigger things. I'm gonna rename this to trigger collision and control s to save let's start by creating the enemy script so i'm gonna right click attach script and the default suggested name and path is fine so hit create let's remove the comments let's begin by creating the functionality of having a health so that it can be hit n times before it dies so let's create health variables so we have a export integer var max health so by default i'm gonna set this to 100 I'm gonna do the same with current health. So we have an integer var, cur mm, let's just name health, equals 100. Now the reason I use export an integer is because when you add enemies to your game, you may want a enemy that is weaker or stronger. It allows you to change the max health and the current health at any time in your editor without having to go into code and mess with things there. So export is very nice. Using our health here, we need to make sure that when something enters our area 2D and what enters is a bullet, we take damage. So I'm gonna select area 2D and double click the body enter because what we are looking for are bodies because we are using kinematic body to hit the player. And that's something to keep in mind. I will go through in detail the differences between the body and area and how to properly understand it because it can be confusing as a beginner in Godot engine when to use body enter, when to use area enter and so on. So for now, let's stick with body enter. Let's double click that. Make sure enemy is selected because this is where we're gonna create the new function where it's on area 2D body enter. Select connect. So, on collision, we want to make sure we have collided with a bullet and not something else, or the player, or anything else. I'm gonna use a var groups equals body.get underscore groups. 
and this allows me to get an array of groups that the body is part of. Because we haven't created a group on our cannonball itself yet, we're gonna have to do that. Select the cannonball scene, select the cannonball, inside our node tab, select groups. And here we can add a bullet group. So I'm gonna select add, press ctrl s to save, and let's go back to our enemy now. Because now if the bullet hit this body, or rather this area, we will get a group named bullet. So if groups has bullet, it means we have got hit by a bullet and may want to take damage. Our health is now minus equal to a certain damage. Now how much damage that will be will depend on the bullet. So we're going to create a function on that bullet called get damage. So I'm gonna use body.get underscore damage. And this will return the value I want to subtract from our health. And then we want to check if our health is less or equal than zero. Because if it is, it means we are dead. So if our health is less than equal to zero, we are going to die. So Q3. Let's create this function now inside our cannonball. So select your cannonball. Inside the cannonball script, let's find a spot to put it. So on the bottom here, I'm just going to create a funk get damage, and that is going to return a damage. Now this is a variable I have not yet created, so I'm going to do that after commenting. So this method will return the damage the bullet will deal. So on the top here, I'm going to create a, another export, and that's going to be export int var damage. And by default, I'm going to set it to 25. So if everything is correct now, when we hit this enemy, it will reduce itself in health up to four times before it dies. So let's try it out. I'm going to turn on explode on impact again, so the bullets won't interfere with each other. So I'm going to shoot once, twice, three, and one last time. That should kill it. And it's gone. Now the last thing we're going to do before we end this is to create a delay. Because if you have bouncing enabled and a bullet is bouncing on top of the enemy, it's going to deal a lot of damage. So I'm going to right click our enemy, add shell node, search for timer. I'm going to select it, I'm going to rename it to a damage delay timer. And if you look in the specter here, we want to run only once, we don't want it to loop. And the wait time of one second is just fine. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get the timer. So get damage timer. On ready, var damage delay equals get node damage delay timer. Using that, on ready, I'm going to make sure to connect it. So when this is done running, we want to enable the damage. So we want to send a signal to ourselves, and we're going to name that signal to on damage delay timeout. I'm going to copy that. On the bottom here, I'm going to create that function on damage delay timeout. So when this has done running its timer, after starting it, of course, we want to enable damaging again. So I'm just going to create another variable on top here, variable god mode. So by default, it will, of course, be false. So I'm going to use this so when it's done running, it will turn itself to false again. But that means is when I get hit by a bullet, I take damage. I'm also going to enable god mode so I cannot take damage for a while. And then I'm going to enable the damage delay. So I'm just going to start it. Last thing we have to do now is to make sure that we cannot take damage while god mode is true. So on top of her, I'm just going to add an and. It's not true. So as long as god mode is not enabled, we can do this. So if I get hit in meanwhile, until this is set back to false, I will no longer take damage. Okay, so let's try this out. If everything works correctly, I can shoot at least one, I believe I can shoot two bullets before it takes damage, but just so we know it works, I'm gonna have to print out. So on top of it, I'm just gonna create a simple print. Taking damage, and let's play it and see if this works. As you can see, it only hits every other, which works just as we want it to. So thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye bye.